Talk about the Xeon. I'm going to talk about the Xeon. So uh, we had a, a Intel has more announcements, and now that we're back into the kind of good territory, so we finally have some information regarding Intel's insane 28 core uh, chip. Which, by the way, they are thank you for this Intel actually calling it a Xeon and not an i9. Mm -hmm. I was worried they were going to call it another i9. So this is the uh, Intel Xeon W3. I hate this. W-3175X, 3175. I think mm -hmm. it's kind of crappy to say. I don't like it. It doesn't... Xeon 3000 or 3175? Uh. 30, I don't know. I don't like it. Um, so anyway, I complain about names sometimes. Yeah, you do. Uh, so this is a uh, uh, based on Skylake or Cascade Lake or whatever you want to call it. It's 14 nanometer plus times 100. Uh, so this is based on their server platform, as you'd expect, which mm -hmm. makes sense why they call it Xeon. Their higher end of their server platform. This is... Uh, Based on LGA 3647 is yeah. the socket used for it. Um, it runs at 3.1 gigahertz stock, but it can boost up to 4.3. It features six channel DDR4, uh, supports a lot of RAM. Up to 512 gigabytes of RAM and a 38.5 megabyte L3 cache. So anyway, it has a TDP of 265 watts. 15 watts higher than AMD's 32 core, just in FYI. Mm -hmm. uh, so what you're saying is that you need this, you need three 2080 Ti's. Four? Why would you go with no, three? No, 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 because you got to have a capture card. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, so three and a capture card. And then you need a... a, a Two power supplies, because the motherboard... So yeah, the motherboard, which I'll get into a little more detail about, actually, because that's almost more exciting. That is more exciting to me, and I think a lot of people than the 28 core. So it is unlocked to mention, of course, as you'd expect, they mentioned that at the initial announcement of this. So it's unlocked uh, Xeon, which is kind of weird to say that. Uh, and it also has 68 PCIe lanes, uh, 24 go to the chipset, I guess, or 24 come from the chipset. Mm -hmm. So uh, so it has 44 on the CPU, and then there's the 24 coming from the chipset, so it doesn't mean you actually get 68 usable. I still don't like the way Intel advertises that. Um, but I think jumping into the motherboard is actually what I'm a little bit more excited for, personally. So, uh, I, you know, okay, 28 core, unlocked. It's going to be insanely expensive. I would estimate $3,000 minimum. But... The motherboard, which is probably going to be a thousand dollars or so, maybe fifteen hundred, wouldn't surprise me, is actually the most insane motherboard I've ever seen in my entire life. Yes. Now this is the first of these motherboards. We don't know. ASUS tends to go crazy with their ROG stuff anyway, especially since they're announcing an ROG motherboard for a server. Yeah, and I mean, of course, plus who knows if any. Uh, maybe this is going to be basically the only board for that platform. It's such a niche area. That I don't think very so many people are going to spend money on the it. The only board for that platform to be an ROG board. Oh no, there's already boards for 3647. Uh, 3, yeah, they're just not not boards designed for this CPU yeah. specifically. What I'm saying is for this CPU. Designed as an ultra enthusiast mm -hmm. system, it would not surprise me if there was just one board. Yeah, uh, because it's so it's so ultra enthusiast. You don't sell much. Mm -hmm. Your profit margins have to be insane because you don't sell much. So this is the uh, uh, Super ATX form factor. Basically, it's SSI CEB, uh, massive server size motherboard as, as you'd expect. Twelve DIMM slots. So we're looking at uh, like we said up to five hundred twelve gigabytes of RAM. But this is what blows my mind. 32 power phases. Now, we knew this when the original one was showed off, but still, 32 power phases. Nice. I literally put in here, maybe AMD is right about Shintel being so hot, because 32 power phases, we only need 16 phases for Threadripper, the 32 core, Threadripper uh, uh, 2990WX, and that's enough to push it like to its max overclock. You don't need, what like, realistically... Do 12 gigahertz? I mean, I get it. I get it, right? You're already paying so much for a board. What's some more MOSFETs and stuff, right? Yeah. No big deal. But still, this is just insane. Two 24-pin connectors designed to run off of two separate power supplies. Yeah. Now, what was interesting to me is how they worded this, and this was from Asus's advertisement of this, not like Intel, So I, is that they were talking about that the dual 24-pins was for better efficiency. Okay, so actually there is truth to that. Yeah, but that's what they're um, talking about. But why are they mentioning that instead of mentioning for more power, you know? Probably because it can't overclock much. 
I, I mean, maybe. I don't know. I don't know. It depends. The, the, like, so this board's probably going to be able to push the CPU to whatever you want, mm. right? Uh, and I mean, two 24 pins, four 8-pin CPU connectors. By the way, you only need two for a Threader Pro 32 core to get to max OC, mm. realistically. Uh, and we're looking at two 6-pin PCIe yeah. power connectors for the board. So, as you pointed out, how this is the only board so far that we've seen specifically designed for this specific chip. Yes. But we know that this chip will work on other boards. Um, presumably being the same socket. We would assume, yes. It's just an unlocked Xeon that would work yeah. on other LG, so, LGA3647. I'm wondering if, being that this is designed specifically for this chip, they just threw everything at it to give you that maximum range of whatever you want to do. To give it yes, that, yes. Because this is our, an ROG board to give it that high overclock potential for showing uh -huh. off. And if I Intel have no... Can, if Intel has somebody make a motherboard specifically so that someone can LN to it and throw it up to 5 gigahertz with 28 cores, Asus that would be, is, yeah, yeah, that would yeah. be a cool thing to show off and a reason why it has so much. And so, yeah, like this board, I'm not complaining at all. No, right? it's, I want to make awesome. sure I'm not. This yeah. is actually incredible. This is amazing that Asus has put together something so insane. And I just love seeing And then they chose a Quantio... It. Now the now the ten gigabit ten gigabit NIC on it is a Quantia, and that kind of makes me laugh because this is an Intel chip, and you would hope that Intel would put their good NICs on it. Yeah. But because the Quantia NICs tend to have some problems, they're great for consumers, but for when you know you're paying probably a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars for a board, I would hope to see an come Intel on. NIC on there. Yeah, they're come on, like, Intel, fire your bad NICs, keep your good ones. Yeah, like for real. I mean, they fired Tim finally. Yeah. So well, I don't know. Yeah, but was Tim the reason that these benchmarks went live? Maybe that's why they fired him. Ah, that's a good point. That's a good point. Point is, this is an amazing, amazing motherboard. I'm more excited about the board than I am the chip. The chip is cool, but I'm excited to see the performance of the chip and everything, mm -hmm. but we can kind of expect where it's going to fall. Yeah. But the fact that a board that's this insane exists is just really nice for mm -hmm. for consumers yeah. i mean there's been server boards that are up in that realm of insane but they're you know quad socket motherboards and stuff like mm -hmm. that for one cpu one monolithic die this is insane yeah